Welcome to our lecture online. This was a request from many viewers. Why don't you do some videos on the, not the special, but the general theory of relativity? Because I already had done a lot of videos on the special theory of relativity, but not really on the general theory. There were some references here and there, especially when we're dealing with gravity, but never a series where we really start looking at the general theory of relativity in depth. And so that's the idea here. We're going to really take a closer look what it is and all the effects that are seen when we start looking at the universe in a different light. Now, to get a comparison, because sometimes comparing things will help us understand things, there are indeed two theories of relativity. The special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. So what are the differences? Well, when we're dealing with the special theory of relativity, it has to do with objects moving very close to the speed of light. When an object that has mass starts approaching the speed of light, some very strange things happen. For example, time begins to slow down for the traveler. The mass, or better said, the momentum of the object increases, and the distance or the length shrinks in the direction of travel. So, so let's say that somebody, some observer, is in the spaceship and the spaceship is traveling to a faraway place from and starting from A and traveling to B and the spaceship is beginning to approach the speed of light. C stands for the speed of light and it's 300,000 kilometers per second or 186,000 miles per second. As the spaceship begins to increase and goes faster and faster and begins to reach close to the speed of light time for the observer here begins to slow down. The clock begins to slow down, the observer, the heart rate slows down, the breathing slows down relative to an observer on a stationary planet. For example, here's the planet Earth, there's an observer observing the traveler traveling through space really fast, and yes, everything on that spaceship sees, begins to slow down. In addition, the distance traveled seems to shorten. For, for example, B begins to get closer and closer and closer from the apparent observance of the observer on the spaceship. And the observer on Earth looking at the spaceship, the spaceship also seems to decrease in size or decrease in length. So these very strange things begin to happen in the limit. The time would essentially begin to, or not begin, but the time would eventually stop if the velocity reaches the speed of light. The momentum or the mass would increase to infinity and the distance would shrink to zero. So the distance B would basically go all the way down to A, or in other words, the distance from A to B would shrink down to zero if the spaceship were to reach the speed of light. It all came down from the realization by Einstein that all observers see light traveling at the same speed C, regardless of the speed of the source and the speed of the observer. So now let's go to the general theory of relativity. Einstein began to realize there was a problem with this equation that we had been that at that time had been known for several hundred years. The general equation of gravity that that the Newton came up with where the force between two objects is equal to the gravitational constant times the product of the masses divided by the distance between them squared. So the idea was that if we have two masses, they would feel a force of attraction equal to this equation. But Einstein claimed that it's just a special case of the general theory of relativity because he really came down to the point is what is gravity? What is the force of gravity? Is there actually such a thing as forces pulling things together? And he said no. He said that the gravity that we're experiencing, even though we can measure it on a scale, we can, and, and this equation can, you know, has been proven to be correct in most of the things that we experience in daily life, he said that Gravity is actually caused by the warping of space. There is no such thing as a force pulling things together. Essentially, when you have a large mass like this, it curves space a lot, and the smaller mass will simply fall into the curvature of space, giving you the impression that the two objects are being pulled together. Now, of course, this smaller mass will also warp space to a smaller extent, but essentially the effect by the bigger mass is greater, and so the smaller mass will fall towards the bigger mass simply because it falls into that curvature, into the warping of space. And all this came about by Einstein's realization that there's what we call the equivalence principle, and we'll deal with that in more detail later, 
But the effect of the equivalence principle is that he claimed that light itself, light which has no mass whatsoever, is also affected by gravity. Now, of course, when you go back to the equation by Newton, where we need the two masses multiplied together to experience a force, everybody at the time said when Einstein claimed that light was affected by gravity, that's impossible. Because if something here has zero mass and this becomes zero, the force of gravity needs to be zero. So it is impossible for light to be affected by gravity. But later on, they were able to prove that this is actually correct. And once it was proven that light is affected by gravity, we realized we needed something more than the equation of Newton to explain gravity. And then everybody came to realize that Einstein was correct, that since gravity is affected by the curvature of space, which is caused by placing mass in space, then any light coming near that curvature would simply follow that curved path of space, and therefore you have the exact same result of how light is affected by gravity as opposed to any other mass being affected by gravity. So essentially, the difference is that the special theory of relativity has to do with objects moving very fast and approaching the speed of light, the general theory of relativity has to do with the concept of gravity, what it actually is. This is not a fic fiction of someone's imagination. This is simply the, the way it really is in the universe. Gravity is not some mysterious force where two things are pulled together the way Newton thought about it, although the equation is usable in almost every aspect of life and every aspect of science. But the real thing is that Gravity is, is caused by putting object in space, affecting space, curving space, and then things fall into that curvature, including light, which is what we call the general theory of relativity, is the fact that, that gravity is simply a result of the warping of space by placing mass in space. So that is what we're going to now look at in a little bit more detail, actually a lot more detail, and you'll find that there's amazing things that come about and what's interesting is that all the things that were predicted by this theory, according to Einstein, have actually been proven to be correct with experimental results that are very, very closely matched the predicted values because of the basis of that theory. It's actually amazing to see how the universe is actually built up with these principles. So stay tuned and we'll show you a lot more about the general theory of relativity. <laughs> My little spiel. <laughs> okay. Um, the mass one that warping the space so much, couldn't that be what a black hole is? You warp the space so much that it just, that the warping is so severe that not, it goes, it only can't come back out anymore. That is indeed correct. So what, what she's saying, what my wife is saying is that if you imagine this to be a black hole, Will the curvature be so dramatic that nothing can get out anymore? So the, the, the question is, is great, and the answer is absolutely. So if this is, for example, a star, you can simply still get away from the star if you have enough of an acceleration. So for the sun, the escape velocity is somewhere around 650 kilometers per second. So if you get a spaceship that can travel fast enough, you could actually get away from the gravitational pull of the sun. You can actually overcome that curvature of space. But with a black hole, curvature is so dramatic, and we'll do a special video on that as well, that the curvature is so, so great that nothing, not even light, can escape. Not even light has enough energy, so to speak, to get out of that curvature space and just pulled in and you can't come out. That's exactly what a black hole is. It's curvature space to the point where nothing can get out anymore. So is the bottom of the black hole just a bunch of little things? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, well. Yeah, it's probably like a messy room, right? Things keep collecting there and they don't get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, although, of course, the, the material that falls into a black hole is, is destroyed in all respects, right? It no longer has the character of normal material the way we know it. And so, yeah. But nevertheless, it's there and we know the effects of, the effects of that is still there. Yeah, th that is a good question. So it, what is the ultimate construct of the matter that falls into a black hole? And that, that simply has not yet been defined as such. And 
I have myself have a little trouble to imagine that it goes down to zero volume. It, it doesn't doesn't seem to be possible, but um, there's all kinds of indication that it either comes very close to that or is zero volume, or at least the volume is quite a bit less than the event horizon, so we can't really look in and figure out what it is. Yeah. But the fact that the mass still appears to be there, there must simply still be some reckoning, some, some realism in there that represents the mass in a black hole. But we're actually kind of diverting from the real topic is what's the general theory of relativity? So be patient, we'll get there. <laughs> but it is quite amazing. And just the thing that gravity is a curvature space it was a, an incredible realization of Einstein, and it's absolutely correct. Well, if the universe created with something that's from zero dimensions, right? And a big bang, there's nothing there? Yes, it's, that's a huge question mark still, right? What was the beginning of the universe? Where did it all come from? Where all that energy that produced everything we see, this humongous universe, came from? That also is worth some videos to try and yeah, think, yeah, make no, that out. You said that it's hard to imagine that the bottom of a, the bottom of a black, hole black hole has zero volume, yet that enormous amount of mass, it, it really is. It started out with zero volume. But zero mass, apparently, too. Yeah. So... And if there's zero mass, then there's no force of gravitational attraction. It's the mass that causes gravity, not energy, or maybe both. Good questions. I like your questions. I like your reason, your way of thinking, because actually when you begin to think a lot like that, there may be some really interesting explanations of what that really is. Okay, we'll explore it some more. <laughs>